Hey everyone, Brad Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Uh, thanks for joining us. This week we're, uh, we're going to talk about the Houston management uh, interface again. Uh, we gave an intro about a week or two ago, um, very high level, and uh, uh, we owe you a, a little deeper look into some of the new modules. So remember what I said about Houston, we've built it off cockpit. So uh, a lot of the stuff included is cockpit features. So uh, what we're going to focus on this week is we're going to talk about the ZFS module and we're going to talk about our hardware module. And uh, those are the kind of pieces that we have first added to this uh, fork of cockpit that we call Houston. So let's get into it. We're going to jump over to my computer here and uh, let's go for a tour. Okay, so we're sitting at the landing page of Houston right now. And uh, like I said, we did a kind of a high level uh, intro of this two weeks ago, kind of saying what it is. And for anyone here who hasn't seen that, uh, that video, Houston is a web-based Linux server user interface. Now those are a lot of words for, you can administrate your Linux server with ease from a browser. Um, for those who have used the cockpit project before or have heard of it, might, might see uh, that this looks a little familiar because we have built Houston off the cockpit project and uh, a lot of these modules on the, on the sidebar here uh, may look familiar. So what I want to talk about today is in particular the ZFS module and this hardware module. And these are the pieces that we've kind of curated and built into Houston. So first I'm going to start with the ZFS module. So uh, just a little background of what this is. This was originally authored by a company called Optimans. They are in Australia and they've open sourced this. So we, we took this, forked it, and we've built in some quality of life stuff. First of all, we'll still keep working on CentOS 7 and a couple other stuff. So big thanks to, uh, for them for their great work on this. And um, yeah, so with that showed out of the way, let's, let's just use the ZFS pool. So right now, I don't have any storage pools found because there isn't any made. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, make a 5-drive RAID Z1, um, create it, and then we'll expand it later. We'll take a look at snapshots. We'll make some data sets, do a Samba share. But really, the point is to show you how we can get to a Samba share like that with a snap of a finger. So let's create a storage pool. So we're going to have to give it a name, so I'll call it Tank. Uh, our type of virtual device, which our type of RAID, we want to do a RAID Z1, one parity. I'm going to uncheck this box right here and I'm going to use virtual device mapping because this is how we can use aliases to address the disks in the system. And what I mean by that is take a look at this little 1-4 right below the uh, serial or the model number of the drive. That coincides directly to the uh, slot number that's silk screened onto the grid of your Storinator. That way you know that I want to put the first five drives of my in my system into the pool oh I can go dig them out well look at that I don't have one in 1-5 that's no big deal I'll use 1-8 but my point there is you can quickly see if you want to be particular about which physical drive you want to put into a RAID or which virtual device anyway that's how easy that can be I'm going to leave the rest of the uh, options as default here. Actually, I'm going to, going to put the uh, reservation at 0%. That's like a little padding, say you want to leave a little room for yourself. I don't need that for right now, so I'm just going to hit that. And we're going to hit Create. So we'll see our little spinning wheel there as it creates our storage pool. Our green check, we have ourselves a storage pool called Tank. Uh, five drives. Uh, let's take a look at status, and there they are. Okay. Great. Okay, so our pool is created. So now we have our, our, our disks arranged in a pool that are safe and secure. Now it's time to create a share that we can access uh, from a, a Windows computer. So let's create an SMB share, a Samba share. So I'm gonna hit Create File System, and we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call this one Share One, because I wanna dedicate this to being a Samba share. I'm gonna leave everything with the basic stuff here. I'm not gonna give it, ah, you know what, quotas are fun. Let's give it a quota. I'm going to give it a quota of 5 terabytes. Um, and again, all these inherited options are safe just to leave. And we're going to hit Enable Samba Share. We're going to hit Create. And there we go. 
So now you can see that tank, uh, share one, which is a data set of tank, which is limited to just five terabytes, the quota we set, compression is enabled, and it's sharing SMB. Um, say you wanted to play with some of the SMB configuration options, we can go into configure Samba share, and this is some basic stuff here. So if you want to go additional and say we wanted to put, um, uh, what's, a, what's a good one? I'm, I'm trying to think of a good Samba option on top of my head and I can't. Let's say VFS objects equals shadow copy two, which would allow uh, past versions of Windows to be seen. Um, you would put it in like this and we'd hit configure and that would update that in the share. So by default, you don't really have to change anything, but this is how um, easy it would be to update your, uh, um, update your share information or if you had anything particular you wanted to put in there extra. So I'm gonna turn that off for now and um, just hit configure again. So that's a Samba share. Uh, I'm gonna do this one more time, but we're gonna create an NFS export. I'm gonna call it NFS export, leave everything the same. I'm not, uh, you, Quotas are just so fun. I'm going to do one terabyte this time. And uh, I'm going to check Samba Share. So here are some NFS options. The default is usually fine, but of course you can get, uh, you can get creative if you need to. And you just hit Create. And then now you can see the same idea, NFS comes up. Now you might be asking me, well, can I share the same path out with Samba and NFS? Uh, if you have to, yes, you can. You would just go back to Configure File System. You would check your NFS share option and you hit configure. And now you can see the NFS plus SMB. So that's how quick and easy it is to make your pool and then make shares on top of it. Okay, so with our shares created, let's, uh, let's go to the next common task of a Z pool. Uh, we wanna expand it, we have some more drives. Let's, let's add another RAID group, another virtual device to the Z pool, get another 54 terabytes um, uh, allowed to us. So we hop open to the status tab. We're still in our root tank here. And so at the, uh, at the level of the top level pool here, tank, we choose the three option button and uh, three button option. I always, I don't know why I call it that, but it is what it is. Um, so here, yeah, we're gonna pick virtual device. We're gonna say another RAID Z1. Again, we're gonna uncheck that button and we're gonna choose the virtual device mapping because we wanna see the actual cards or, or where the drives are that we're adding. So I'm gonna add the 1-7, 1-6, 112, 1-9. How many drives is that? That is four and five. And then we're gonna hit add. And it's gonna spin for a minute and then Virtual device successfully added to the storage pool. So now you can see on our status here, we've got five more disks in another RAID group called RAID Z1-1. There's all our disks. And our usable size is doubled to 109 terabytes. Um, and that's how easy it is to expand the Z pool uh, through the UI here. Um, what's next? Uh, replacing a drive. If we had to replace a drive, uh, it would come up here. We would hit offline. We'd offline the disk. So it shows off offline, we're degraded. Hit replace disk. And again, I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna virtual device map and say I'll put 115 in there. I hit replace, give it a second, and there we go, that's replaced. So of course I had those disks in the system already. In the case of a failure, you would have offline that disk, gone over to your server, unplugged it, plugged in the new one, and then it would have re-added there. Um, but yeah, see, all very, very easy stuff right from the UI. It still says degraded, but I believe that should go away once we refresh. Yep, there we go, it's online. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in the ZFS screen right now is snapshots. Um, by default, we have a service that runs, uh, that takes automated snapshots at the 15 daily, no, sorry, 15 minute, so frequent, uh, hourly, daily, and uh, monthly. That's all of them. And of course, it can be user configured. You can have all of those, you can have those. Or if you wanted to uh, create one manually, you can do it here. Um, of course, the automated ones that get created, they do show up in this, in this window as well. But let's just create a manual one right now. So we're gonna hit snapshot. We could snapshot the whole pool or we could sh snapshot a individual uh, uh, data set underneath. So like say we just wanna snapshot share one, our Samba share. 
Um, by default, it'll just do the, the year, the month, the day, hour, minute, and second. Or you can give it a test, uh, a custom name and uh, say snap one because I have very exciting names that I choose for things. Hit create. And there it shows up there. So say we needed to get something back from that snapshot, we could hit roll back and that will literally roll back, clobber and erase anything already and go back to this snapshot. Use that one with care. You wanna give it a new name. Or if you wanted to clone it and give it uh, share one, snap one, what it'll do is let's jump back over to file systems here and then it shows up as a whole new data set. So you could go in here and see this little list indicates that it's a clone file system. So we could go and turn on a Samba share there and you know it could be like a temporary place where you could go retrieve some data or something like that. Maybe you don't want to do a full rollback, you just want to go looking for a particular file. Anyway, it could all be done through here. So in that case what you would do if you want to if you don't want to go to the command line to find it, you would just enable Samba share on it, connect to it and go go dig it out that way. So I'm going to um, destroy that clone file system because I don't need it anymore. Uh, da, 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 I don't need to choose any of that. Hit destroy. That's gone. But of course, our snapshot is still present. Just the clone of it that we mounted is gone. Um, so that's pretty much, that, that goes over the, the main functions of what this can do. You can do all your main ZFS tasks directly in this, in this uh, tab. Okay, so let's hop open to the other module we built uh, called hardware. So immediately on landing here, you may recognize what's on the front of your screen here. It is a Stornator. In particular, this, in, in, particular, in particular, this is a Stornator Hybrid 16 turbo model. So what this tells us is this is a Q30 chassis size and it is hybrid. So we have one row and half a row was converted to 16 SSDs and the turbo tells us what electronic package is in there. Um, that is a, our dual CPU socket model with um, Intel 4210 CPUs. And this is your product serial number. So if you ever have to call for support or, or talk to any sales guy or, or just identify your unit, it's a uh, quick, quick um, look right here. There's also printed physically on the side of your Storinator, but it is now um, here. So we'll hop open to system detail. This is exciting if you need the information. Um, some more, it's, uh, uh, we print out all this information, again, the model, the serial, and the chassis size. We tell you the info about the, the motherboard, CPU, PCIe slots, because again, we, 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 are, we are fans of custom. Sometimes people use our, our default loadout of things. Sometimes they want to move things around. Sometimes they want to add their own cards. So here's a quick way of looking. Um, like for example, we have a 25 gigabit NIC in this thing. Uh, I also have a 10 gig NIC and I have two HBA cards and I know exactly which slots they're in because of this. RAM, um, oh yeah, and we get our temperature that way too. Quick, quick look at that. But that's enough on this. Let's look at this in a more, I don't know how you say, appealing way. Uh, we'll hop open to the interactive motherboard. So this is as if you kind of took the top off the motherboard chamber and you're looking down on your unit. This is dynamically populated based on the cards that you have in your system. And uh, like I said, the 25 gig and 10 gig card that I was talking about, if you mouse over them, it shows you information about the card. So here's the 25 gig card I was talking about. Um, it's not connected to anything right now because we can see uh, down in our connection state. Uh, our HBA card. Uh, here's our 10 gig NIC. HBA card. And if you want to see the temperature of the CPU or, or anything like that, if you want to see a RAM, a DIM, um, one, one little cool thing about this is, <laughs> I know it's a failure condition, but uh, sometimes when dim slots fail, they're very quiet about that, and they'll flash that in the BIOS, but you won't notice, and then all of a sudden you'll be magically missing some RAM. It would, st it would notify you right here if, if there was a problem there. So it's just another way to uh, um, keep tabs on everything in your system. Um, really kind of removing that black box of it. It's like you have full control over your hardware here. Um, and that's our hardware tab. That's the kind of overview of all the pieces in it. And a quick look to uh, see exactly what's in your Storinator. So, as we mentioned before, people have asked, it, asked if this is open source and if they can run this 
if they have to pay for it, if they have to do it on 45 drives hardware. And like I said in the other video, I'll say again now, no to both. Uh, this is not paid. This is a fork of the cockpit project. We are building with other people's projects as well. We are open source. That's who we are at 45 drives. We always will. And um, with the small caveat of the hardware page I just showed you, does require 45 drives hardware to run properly. Um, so what people would do if they want to use Houston, but they're not using 45 drives hardware, the cockpit dash hardware module is a separate RPM that's installed or a separate package that's installed. So you just wouldn't use it, but you could still get every, um, all the use out of the ZFS module, um, minus those alias names that I was talking about. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where Houston is right now. So I can't wait to, uh, more people start using it, giving us feedback and, um, share the new modules and the new ideas that we have coming out over the next few months. So, so there we go, everyone. There's a deeper dive into Houston. Um, in particular, the ZFS module and the hardware module. So as always, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions at all, want to see anything more about this, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And um, that's it. Oh, and like, so I've been doing these YouTube videos forever, how long now? And I've never got to like do my favorite part of like the classic YouTube outro. So uh, smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll catch you next week.